Please join me in our call to remembrance and prayer. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and we love darkness rather than light. God is light, in whom there is no darkness at all. For God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, but all who do what is true come to the light. We have heard this story before many times. Let us focus ourselves and hear it with fresh ears. Come, let us worship in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. O holy God, the hosannas have dried away, the palm branches have turned brittle. Now today there is only this, each of us, all of us sitting in the darkness, the hymns of lament in the air, the mumblings of our own feeble confession on this Friday, which we tremble to call good. What is good about Good Friday? What is good about the innocent one nailed to a cross? What is good about the darkness of war that persists today? What is good about our devastation to the planet? About people living in poverty, about the fog of addiction, depression, disease, and despair? What is good about the crushing weight of hunger, racism, scapegoating, and apathy? No, there is nothing good and desirable in these things, Yet you, O oh God, are good. When suffering reigns, yours is the first heart to break. 
When despair lurks about, we remember that you were there first. Peering into the abyss and crying out incredibly, Father, forgive them. When we feel forsaken, we remember that in your last moments, you cared for your mother and your beloved disciple, binding them to one another as a new family. When we feel overcome by guilt, we remember that you spoke grace to a thief. Today you will be with me in paradise. Your love for us is just that boundless and ever present and good. Thank you. What else can we say here in the dimness, in the darkness, but thank you. Amen. Psalm 41, 5 through 9. My enemies speak maliciously about me. When will he die and his name disappear? 
whenever they come to visit, they say nothing of value. Their hearts collect evil gossip. And once they leave, they tell it to everybody. All of those who hate me talk about me, whispering to each other, plotting evil against me. Some horrible thing has poured into him. The next time he lies down, he won't get up. Even my good friend, the one I trusted, who shared my food, has kicked me with his heel. A betrayer. Luke 22, 1 through 6, and 39 through 48. The festival of unleavened bread, which is called Passover, was approaching. The chief priests and the legal experts were looking for a way to kill Jesus because they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went out and discussed with the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard how he could hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted and arranged payment for him. He agreed and began looking for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them, a time when the crowds would be absent. Jesus left and made his way to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived, he said to them, Pray that you won't give in to temptation. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. He said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not my will but your will must be done. Then a heavenly angel appeared to him and strengthened him. He was in anguish and prayed even more earnestly. His sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he got up from praying, he went to the disciples. He found them asleep, overcome by grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. While Jesus was still speaking, a crowd appeared, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss?
Isaiah 53, 1 through 8. Who can believe what we have heard? And for whose sake has the Lord's arm been revealed? He grew up like a young plant before us, like a root from dry ground. He possessed no splendid form for us to see, no desirable appearance. He was despised and avoided by others, a man who suffered, who knew sickness well. Like someone from whom people hid their faces, he was despised, and we didn't think about him. It was certainly our sickness that he carried and our sufferings that he bore, but we thought him afflicted struck down by God and tormented. He was pierced because of our rebellions and crushed because of our crimes. He bore the punishment that made us whole. By his wounds we are healed. Like sheep we had all wandered away, each going its own way, but the Lord let fall on him all our crimes. He was oppressed and tormented, but didn't open his mouth. Like a lamb being brought to slaughter, like a ewe silent before her shearers, he didn't open his mouth. Due to an unjust ruling, he was taken away, and his fate, who will think about it? He was eliminated from the land of the living, struck dead because of my people's rebellion. Mark 15, 1-20 As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. During the festival, Pilate normally released one prisoner to them whoever they requested. A man named Barabbas was locked up with the rebels who had committed murder during an uprising. The crowd pushed forward and asked Pilate to release someone as he regularly did. Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? He knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of jealousy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barnabas to them instead. Pilate replied, Then what do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What wrong has he done? They shouted even louder, Crucify him! Pilate wanted to satisfy the crowd, so he released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus whipped, then handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the courtyard of the palace, known as the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole company of soldiers. They dressed him up in a purple robe and twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on him. They saluted him, Hail, the king of the Jews! Again and again they struck his head with a stick. They spit on him, and knelt before him to honor him. When they finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him.
Psalm 22, 14 through 19. I am poured out like water. All my bones have fallen apart. My heart is like wax. It melts inside me. My strength is dried up like a piece of broken pottery. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You set me down in the dirt of death. Dogs surround me. A pack of evil people circle me like a lion. Oh, my poor hands and feet. I can count all my bones. Meanwhile, they just stare at me, watching me. They divvy up my garments among themselves. They cast lots for my clothes. But you, Lord, don't be far away. You are my strength. Come quick and help me. Deliver me from the sword. Mark fifteen twenty two to 25 They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means skull place. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he didn't take it. They crucified him. They divided up his clothes, drawing lots for them to determine who would take what. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him.
Psalm 22, 1 through 11. My God, my God, why have you left me all alone? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my anguished groans? My God, I cry out during the day, but you do not answer. Even at nighttime, I, I don't stop. You are the Holy One enthroned. You are Israel's praise. Our ancestors trusted you. They trusted you and you rescued them. They cried out to you and they were saved. They trusted you and they weren't ashamed. But I'm just a worm, less than human, insulted by one, despised by another. All who see me make fun of me. They gape shaking their heads. He committed himself to the Lord. So let God rescue him. Let God deliver him because God likes him so much. But you are the one to pull me from the womb, placing me safely on my mother's breasts. I was thrown on you from birth. You've been my God since I was in my mother's womb. Please don't be far from me because trouble is near and there's no one to help. Matthew 27, 39 through 50. Those who were walking by insulted Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, So you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, were you? Save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the legal experts and the elders, were making fun of him, saying, He saved others, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel, so let him come down from the cross now. Then we'll believe him. He trusts in God, so let God deliver him now if he wants to. He said, I'm God's son. The outlaws who were crucified with him insulted him in the same way. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At about three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After hearing him, some standing there said, He's calling Elijah. Another one of them ran over, took a sponge full of vinegar, and put it on a pole. They offered it to Jesus to drink, but the rest of them said, Let's see if Elijah will come and save him. Again, Jesus cried out with a loud shout. Then he died.
Amos 8, 9 through 11. On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into sad affairs and all your singing into a funeral song. I will make people wear mourning clothes and shave their heads. I will make it like a loss of an only child and the end of it like a bitter day. The days are surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send hunger and thirst on the land, neither a hunger for bread nor a thirst for water, but for hearing the Lord's words. Matthew 27, verses 45, 51, and 54. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. The curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and what had just happened, they were filled with awe and said, Surely this man was God's son.
Zechariah 12, 9 through 12a. On that day, I intend to destroy all the nations who come against Israel, but I will pour out a spirit of grace and mercy on David's house and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They will look to me concerning the one whom they pierced. They will mourn over him like the mourning of an only child. They will mourn bitterly over him like the bitter mourning over the death of an oldest child. On that day, the mourning in Jerusalem will be as great as the mourning of Hadad Ramon in the Megiddo Valley. The land will mourn each of the clans by itself. John 19, 31 through 37. It was Friday, the day of preparation for the Sabbath, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies to remain on the cross on the Sabbath, especially since that Sabbath was an important day. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of those crucified broken and the bodies taken down. Therefore the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men who were crucified with Jesus. When they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. However, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. The one who saw this has testified so that you may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scriptures that say none of his bones shall be broken might be fulfilled. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. Luke 23, 50 through 55. Now there was a man named Joseph who was a member of the council. He was a good and righteous man. He hadn't agreed with the plan and actions of the council. He was from the Jewish city of Arimathea and eagerly anticipated God's kingdom. This man went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Taking it down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a tomb carved out of rock in which no one had ever been buried. It was the preparation day for the Sabbath, and the Sabbath was quickly approaching. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph. 
they saw the tomb and how Jesus' body was laid in it. Isaiah 54, 7 through 10. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great mercy, I will bring you back. In an outburst of rage, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting love, I have consoled you, says your Redeemer, the Lord. These are like the days of Noah for me, when I promised that Noah's waters would never again cover the earth. Likewise, I promise not to rage against you or rebuke you. The mountains may shift and the hills may be shaken, but my faithful love won't shift from you and my covenant of peace won't be shaken, says the Lord, the one who pities you. Crucified, my Lord. Were you there when they crucified, my Lord? Oh, sometimes. to